Good morning, everyone. <laughs> today is our children's day. It's a, today, it's a day that we thank God for our children in the past year of Sunday school. We also recognize graduates and thank teachers for the hard work they put in. The songs were chosen by the Sunday school classes, and children and youth will help lead the service. Our call to worship today comes from Psalm chapter 5, 7, and 8. But I, through the abundance of your steadfast love, will enter your house. I will bow down toward your holy temple in the fear of you. Lead me, O Lord, in your righteous, because of my enemies, make your way straight before me. Thanks, Case. Good to see you all this morning. Let's stand and worship. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship his whole.
Amen. We do worship you, Lord. Amen. For this next song, we're going to need help from uh, those who were in Miss Amy and Miss Sarah's class. Who is in Miss Amy and Miss Sarah's class? Preschool and kindergarten. If you were in Miss Amy and Miss Sarah's class, come on up. And if you're another kid who knows this song and wants to help out, come on up. It's called God Made Me. And there are some motions that you're going to have to follow along. Look at these kids up here to follow along. This is to the tune of If You're Happy and You Know It. So you all know this song. And it goes from my head down to my toes, God made me. From my head down to my toes, God made me. From my head down to my toes, to my eyes and ears and nose. From my head down to my toes, God made me. Okay, you ready? Mm. From my head down to my toes, God made me. From my head down to my toes, God made me. From my head down to my toes, and my eyes and ears and nose. From my head down to my toes, God made me. Wait a minute, we have to stop. I don't see anyone out there doing the motions to this these kids out. Let's do that again. From my head down to my toes, God made me. From my head down to my toes, God made me. From my head down to my toes, and my eyes and ears and nose. From my head down to my to my toes, God loves me. From my head down to my toes, God loves me. From my head down to my toes, turn my eyes, ears, and nose. From my head down to my toes, God loves me. Now, I think the kids really like to do this fast. So let's try it one time fast on loves me. Ready? One, two, three. From my head down to my toes, God loves me.
that we are has come from you. Hearts that were once by sin enslaved, now by your power have been made new. Now by your power have been made new. Gloria, Gloria, glory to God alone. Gloria, Gloria, glory to God alone. Our voices. Gloria, Gloria, glory to God. seated. God, we do give you the glory today, and in particular, we believe you are glorified through children, through their faith, their curiosity, uh, through the ways that we are, uh, we are able to love them with your love, and through the ways that they show us what it looks like to trust in you, through their, their childlike faith. And so be glorified today in our service. Thank you for each person here. Thank you for this time of celebration. And thank you uh, that Jesus, you have made this possible. We pray in your name. Amen. Well, we're going to hear a scripture reading now. And uh, Ava Bior will help us out with that. So come on up, Ava. This passage reading is from Mark 10, 13 through 16. One day, some parents brought their children to Jesus so he could touch and bless them. But the disciples scolded the parents for bothering him. When Jesus saw what was happening, he was angry with his disciples. He said to them, let the children come to me. Don't stop them, for the kingdom of God belongs to those who are like these children. I tell you the truth, anyone who doesn't receive the kingdom of God like a child will never enter it. Then he took the children in his arms and placed his hands on their heads and blessed them. Thank you, Ava. I promised a 10 minute sermon today. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick to my word. I have two simple points to make from this passage. I think this is a familiar story to all of us. Number one, children need adults to bring them to Jesus, right? So, so parents are bringing their kids to Jesus, probably um, infants and toddlers based on the, uh, the wording in Greek. And, and so they're bringing them to Jesus so he could touch them and bless them. And that was actually a common practice for rabbis in Jesus's day that they would bless children. Now, for many parents, uh, the blessing would, you know, you'd seek a blessing just for your child's health and safety because a lot of kids didn't make it to adulthood in those days. So there's Jesus holding the babies and, and blessing them, but the disciples didn't think this was such a good use of Jesus's time. They're looking at all these parents lined up with their babies and toddlers, and they're thinking, if he keeps doing this, every parent from here to Jerusalem is going to be lined up. He'll be here for weeks, blessing kids. He can't sit here all day holding babies. He's got people to see and places to go and miracles to perform. He's got a kingdom to build. Jesus can't use his precious time for kids. So they started shooing parents and children away. But when Jesus saw that, he was what? Angry. A few places in the Gospels where Jesus is angry, and this is one of them. When 
Adults were preventing children from coming to him. The fact is children need Jesus, but they need adults to bring them to Jesus. In Jesus's day, just like in our day, children were at the mercy of adults' choices. A three-year-old can't decide for himself where he lives or what he's fed or where his parents take him or how often he bathes. And we know that good parents do everything they can to make sure their child is taken care of. But you know, just as much as kids need food and shelter and love and safety, they need Jesus. And they need adults to bring them to Jesus. In our culture today, I don't think you would find anyone who says children aren't important enough for Jesus's time. But it's interesting, we kind of see the opposite. Sometimes we see adults thinking that Jesus isn't important enough for children's time. <laughs> children have sports to play and friends to visit and camps to go to and family functions to attend. And I think the mentality is as long as they have enough Jesus, as long as they have some exposure through VBS or through some Sunday school or through some stuff at home, then they'll know enough about Jesus to believe in him. But, but Jesus was angry when grown-ups were preventing kids from coming to him. Children need adults in their lives to take them to Jesus. Sometimes they won't want to Struggles they face, you know, whatever it is, their anxiety, their asthma, their life-threatening allergies, their, their social issues, whatever it is, you know, the dangers they face, and you know the incredible love you have for them and the desire you have for them to flourish and be everything that God wants them to be. Well, Jesus feels that way about your kids even more than you do. So bring your kids to Jesus. Don't hinder them. And to other adults here today, maybe you aren't, you aren't raising kids right now, but you might have someone in your life, a child in your life, whose parents are not bringing them to Jesus. Maybe it's a neighbor, a niece or nephew, a grandchild, a friend. And respectfully and carefully and prayer that child and Jesus through uh, telling them about Jesus, giving them a Bible, uh, a story Bible, um, asking their parents if you can take them to church. Maybe you can be a bridge and be an adult who brings a child to Jesus. Well, that's my first point. Children need adults to bring them to Jesus. But here's my second. Adults need children to bring them to Jesus. You see what I did there? <laughs> Adults need children to bring them to Jesus. Look back at what Jesus says in verses 14 and 15. Let the children come to me. Don't stop them. Okay, that's the first point. For... The kingdom of God belongs to those who are like these children. Anyone who doesn't receive the kingdom of God like a child will never enter it. What is Jesus saying here? He isn't saying sometimes we popularly believe that children are like innocent and pure beings 
sinless beings or that they're born with with faith in Christ. He's not saying that. He's saying children have something adults need to learn from, a posture toward God, a childlike attitude. Adults are self-sufficient, at least they try to be, but children run to others for help, just as we must do with God, right? Adults are skeptical, cynical, but children are trusting just as we must be with God. Adults are guarded about their true feelings. We, we uh, put on masks. We work to hide our true selves. But kids are completely transparent. When they feel something, you know it. Just as we must be with God. Are you, are you seeing what Jesus is saying here? If I could put it this way, the door to the kingdom is three feet high, so to speak. And only those with a childlike heart can get through it. You can't fit your grown-up strength and your grown-up pride and your grown-up knowledge and your grown-up um, self-sufficiency through that door. You've got to be a child. You have to have a childlike posture. And so adults need children to bring them to Jesus. We can look at the kids around us. That's another reason why we love having kids in this church, not only for their sakes, but so that adults can learn from them what it means to trust God. And so I challenge us in this church not only to welcome kids and to make it a, a space where they are built up and and loved, but also for the adults to humble themselves and learn from the kids here. And when we do that, when we, when we come to Jesus, we become children of God. Now, I want to end by just inviting you to use your imaginations for a moment. So kids... Listen up. Imagine that Jesus is standing right here. Okay, kids, imagine Jesus is standing right here and your mom or dad holds you by the hand and brings you up to see Jesus. Imagine that. What do you think he would look like? What would he say to you? Well, if you're a younger kid, imagine that he, he picks you up in his arms just like mom or dad or grandma or grandpa with so much love in his eyes. And he gently touches your forehead and says, may God bless you, child. And in that moment, you've never felt so loved or so safe or so cared for or so happy in your life. He says, "The Lord, may the Lord bless you, Catherine. May the Lord bless you, Julie. May the Lord bless you, Ewan. Adults, imagine yourself as that child. May the Lord bless you, Sandy. May the Lord bless you, Pete. May the Lord bless you, Sarah. May the Lord bless you, David. If you're an older child, maybe instead of picking you up, Jesus would kneel down next to you and sit on the grass with you and say, tell me about what you like to do. Tell me about your baseball season. Tell me about your friends at school. Tell me about your family. Jesus would listen and ask questions, and, and he would laugh at your jokes, even the ones your parents don't laugh at, and be, be sad about the things that have hurt you. And in that moment, you would feel like there's nothing Jesus would rather be doing than being with you. Now, we don't just have to use our imaginations for that because those things are true. Jesus loves each of us like we love our children. And he is with us. And he wants our church to be a place where people know that. Where many children are brought to Jesus, where no one is hindered, and where even grown-ups learn to be children of God. Amen. 
in a minute. Uh, Raymond Lachance will come and lead us in a time of prayer, but I'd like to just close this sermon with prayer as well. Lord, we thank you for your word, which uh, teaches us something we might not, we would not understand without it, that we need childlike trust in God, that the door to the kingdom is three feet tall. And so help each person here, young and old, to be like a child when we come to you. Jesus, I pray that each of us would feel your love and your care and your strength and the peace you give and be drawn to you. May, we, may all of us be like children climbing up into your lap day after day. And we pray that, that nothing would hinder the children we have here from coming to Jesus. Help us as parents and grandparents to do what we can to take away hindrances uh, and to, to lead our kids to Jesus, even as we come to you with childlike faith. We pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Good morning. Let us pray. Lord, I pray for the children of our church and the children who are not as fortunate to have the opportunity to know you. Lord, in today's day and age, us as children face so much that tries to pull us away. You are forgiving and patient God. I pray for, for the children who are struggling at home. I pray for the children who are hungry right now because they cannot receive a meal from the school. I also pray for the teens, those who are lost, battling addiction, and those trying to find their identity. Lord, and for the teens and children struggling to see what gifts and beauty you have given them. Let them see it and have faith in your plan for them. Lastly, I would like to pray for the parents. Let them have patience with their children and be strong for them. Amen. Uh, and let us say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Um, I'm going to give you a little overview of what our, our year looked like in Sunday school. Um, like so many other things, COVID affected how things were done in Sunday school this year. As a Christian education board met last summer um, and looked towards the start of the Sunday school year in the fall, we had many questions that needed to be addressed. What were the state guidelines? How do we set up our classrooms in a safe way? With social distancing, do we even have enough room? What's our backup plan if everything gets locked down again? How many kids will show up? Do we have enough teachers? Do we have enough substitutes? How can we provide resources for children who won't be attending in person? What kind of curriculum do we use? With worship moving to two services, when do we have classes? Needless to say, there was a lot of brainstorming done and many, many emails sent back and forth. Surveys were sent to parents, supplies were ordered, teachers and class groupings were adjusted, classrooms were set up, and on September 20th, our Sunday school year began. Classes were held during the second worship service. The preschool and kindergarten class met in the larger downstairs classroom in the church with Sarah Blow and me. The kids in the first through fifth grade were combined this year and taught by Shoshana Howard and Sarah Edgerly. They met in the Jimmy Center classroom behind me. The sixth through 12th grade class was taught by Roy and Tina Rabideau and they met in the large activity room in the Jimmy Center. An adult class also met for part of the year before the nine o'clock service and was taught by Dennis Laughlin. Teachers and family of children in preschool for, through fifth grade 
were given a book of Bible lessons called God's Big Plans for Me, Storybook Bible, along with a schedule for those lessons. Whether children were learning in class at church or learning with their family at home, if they followed the schedule, they were all literally on the same page. It kept consistent for the kids who started the year at home and then joined the class in person partway through. It also provided a backup plan in case we needed to temporarily suspend a class due to a COVID exposure or if the state went back into lockdown. Included in the letter to parents were links and ideas to help the kids memorize the books of the Bible, learn how to look up verses by book, chapter, and verse, and to encourage them to pray. In the 6th through 12th grade class, Roy and Tina covered a variety of topics with the kids, and Roy can share more about that in a bit. Overall, in spite of COVID, I think we had a great Sunday school year. I'm thankful that God's truth and his message don't change, even when everything around us does. Um, we're going to, teachers are going to give just a brief overview, kind of, of how our specific classes um, some of the things we covered or how we kind of ran things. Um, and then we'll ask our kids to stand up and after the service, they can come up and we got gifts for them. So, um, if Sarah blow, where is she? Oh, she's over here. I think I tried to figure it out. I think Sarah and I have been teaching the preschool kindergarten class for four years now together. And she's awesome. She's amazing. So we're here. No. Um, anyways, um, in our class, we try to create a sense of fun without watering down the truth of the lessons that are being taught. Um, and since young children often learn and retain more when there's music and movement involved, we try to use songs, games, activities, and crafts to reinforce the Bible story that we've read and discussed. And during other years, we had space in our classroom where we could all gather on the rug for a story, sing songs, maybe play a movement game. And then we moved to a table to work on a craft or activity and talk more about our lesson. But with COVID safety guidelines in place, we didn't have room for both areas. So table went out, a bunch of laundry baskets came in and each child had their own basket to sit in with a couple of soft bath towels. The baskets were spread out to help keep the kids keep to the social distancing guidelines, gave them an anchor. They each had their own separate set of crayons, glue stick, clipboard, that they could use right there, um, their basket, right near the basket, so we could still do some activities even though we didn't have a table. Um, our room was decorated with a bird theme, and so the baskets were our nests. During our first class together, we referenced Psalm 91 4. He will cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you will find refuge. And Matthew 6 26. Look at the birds. They don't worry about what to eat for your heavenly father feeds them and you are far more valuable to him than they are. We talked about how God takes care of us and ways he's still taking care of us in spite of COVID or in the midst of COVID. In addition to the Bible lessons and activities, we also worked on memorizing the books of the New Testament. We learned a tune to help us with that. And the first week it was introduced, one of the kids piped up, oh, it's stuck in my head already. So I guess we pick the right tune. Um, <laughs> we don't know all of our books yet, but we know a lot more than we did in September and kids who are with us next year will keep going on it. Our prayer is that the kids in our class got a sense of God's great love and care for each of them and that they had some fun as they learned more about him. Um, if our guys can stand up where they are, they don't have to come up yet, but there's some. So our kindergartners who are moving up this year are Asher Smith, Brody Edgerly, Ellison Gravitt, and Catherine Trombley. Our preschoolers this year are Ewan Smith, Grace Lachance, Julie Predom, Rebecca Devona, Avery Lowry, Kellen Webb, Layla Meg Gupkoff, and Olivia Sweeney. So we'll see them up here afterwards. Good morning. So as Amy said, this year, 
Uh, Sarah and I taught a combined first through fifth grade class. Um, this was Sarah's first year teaching and my seventh year teaching. And having the grades combined was a huge challenge in itself. Um, I think some of them have had me since they started Sunday school and they were looking forward to this year not having me. Um, but surprise, <laughs> they got stuck with me anyway. Um, so we, um, COVID was difficult for us. Um, being bigger, we wanted to keep them engaged. Um, and with the huge span of ages, we had to find things to keep them engaged on their own levels, but try to keep it all together. So we set up the tables, they had enough space. Um, they had their own boxes that had a Bible in it so they wouldn't have to bring one from home. They had their coloring materials, glue, everything that we could do, everything that we could use. Um, they had all of that set up. And from day one, they had a great routine. They would wait right by the door for me to sanitize them on their way in. And then afterwards, we would sanitize everything in the classroom. And it fortunately kept everybody safe and clean. Um, so this year we have one student going into middle school, uh, which is Dylan Blow. Dylan is going into sixth grade. Um, and normally we would have kindergartners moving into first grade and then second graders moving into third grade in another class. But since we don't know how that's going to go next year, um, you know, we're just going to maybe keep them together for another year. I'm not sure. Um, so we did, we had an amazing year. We discovered that everyone likes crafts. The favorite crafts are the ones that you can eat. Those were everybody's favorite. Um, and it was wonderful to get to know all of them, um, you know, and see how they're adapting and overcoming the pandemic um, and still continuing to grow with God's love. So um, I think that's it. Oh yeah, um, so if you were in mine and Miss Sarah's class, please stand up. I had a very large class this year. Yay, guys. Good morning. For those of you who don't know me, uh, my name is Roy Rabideau and this is my beautiful bride, Tina. And uh, we were the teachers of the sixth through 12th uh, grade class this year. So uh, I wanna start off by uh, sharing my personal struggles with, with the COVID deal. As many of you know, um, I wear hearing aids. I've got substantial hearing loss. And when everybody put a mask on, including myself, um, I was completely lost hearing my students, um, which prompted me to talk to Tina about jumping in and helping me. And I'm so thankful for her. And I'm also thankful for those who helped uh, teach this class this year um, in my absence and jumped in uh, wholeheartedly. And that would be Katie Ballard and Meg Smith and um, Heather Digby. And uh, thank you to them for help, helping teach this very important group of kids uh, you know, to follow Jesus. So I'm going to ask the class right now so I could personally thank you. Stand up if you were uh, to participate in a 6th through 12th class. Uh, thank you. Thank you for your patience in my hearing. Thank you for uh, putting up with me when I constantly had to, to ask you to repeat yourselves or to turn to my interpreter, Tina, and say, what did they say? What did they say? Um, you know, obviously communication is, is very important. And um, I want to thank each one of my class um, for really supporting me in that role. Uh, thanks very much and congratulations on finishing up this year. So I'm gonna give just a, a quick review of um, what we covered in class. And it's always uh, humbling to me to get to the end of the year and find out how many um, roads we went down um, in, this, in this quest uh, to find Jesus and have this relationship with him that is so very, very important. Uh, we started off the year uh, with a couple of write down media series. Um, one was called, Who is Jesus? To really try to hone in with the kids on, on who is the person of Jesus. 
And Brody Jesperson was just phenomenal in that five part series. And the highlights of that series were who the person of Jesus was, that he's our savior, that he's our sanctifier, that he's our healer, and that he's also our king. Um, and um, that was, um, after that, we, we went into a series called Identity um, with uh, Eric Mason, who headed up that series. And um, his highlights of his four-part series were trying to um, teach kids uh, to find their identity in Jesus Christ and not find their identity in so many things that are out there in the world today. So his four-part series talked about um, don't put your identity in, in your image and in your clothes and, and, and as Eric referred to it, your gear, you know, your Nikes and, 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 and all, the, all the things that we look for to try to define to everybody around us who we are and the dangers of that. And he talked about the choices uh, that we make that who will ultimately define who we are in Christ and in the world in front of others. He talked about relationships. And um, I got a thank you from Katie after that class because uh, <laughs> she jumped in to help me. And I think had she known what the topic was that day, she might have thought twice, but uh, <laughs> you did a great job, Katie. Thank you very much. And last, don't find our identi identity. Eric uh, was teaching about our accomplishments and us striving uh, to uh, be accomplished financially or be accomplished in sports or be accomplished, you know. So stop trying to put our self-worth and find our identity in all the things in the world that are that can be pulling us away from Jesus and who we are in his eyes. Um, that kind of springboarded into, uh, we had a, a couple of sessions on healing and Jesus's miracles. And um, the question was put forth, can it really happen today? I mean, is, is this just stories in the Bible or is miraculous healing by prayer and by faith? Does it happen today? And we answer the question by watching a movie. Anybody seen the movie Breakthrough? Breakthrough is a phenomenal movie of faith and of prayer and of healing. And um, so we spent a couple of weeks talking about that and, and the power uh, of the power of prayer, which the Bible talks about in, in your faith. And can it really heal? Uh, and, and the answer is unequivocally yes, absolutely. Sorry. Uh, Easter rolled around and we spent a couple Sundays uh, talking about Easter and the, and the resurrection, showed, showed some clips from the Son of God movie and really concentrated on what happened um, at that, on that third day on Easter um, and spent some time in that. From there, we wanted to finish out the rest of the talking to the kids about what's on, I mean, and they, and they gave a pretty good list. One of the things on the list was evolution. Well, I remember being back in school and talking about evolution and seeing the chart from the monkey to the man. So I did my research. I jumped online. I started reading all about Darwin's theory of evolution. Started looking at various scriptures because I really wanted to answer the class's question because it was a genuine concern. Is this evolution thing something that can break your faith down in Jesus and, and make you really question your beliefs? And for all of us, right? Well, I can tell you, if you haven't studied Darwin's theory of uh, evolution in a while, I'd encourage you to do so because I had a lot of fun um, poking holes in it. <laughs> and and uh, hopefully the class got something. Um, we watched a... Uh, 28 minute um, right now, uh, Ray Comfort, who just asked a bunch of people about evolution, Darwin's theory. And these people included high level professors educated way beyond what I will ever be um, and college students and younger people and older people and just asked him about that theory. And his, his point was, where's, where's the evidence of change of species? And he, he kept asking that. It was an amazing journey for me. Um, and hopefully the kids have something a little more solid to not just accept what the world tells them about God and what the world tells them about Jesus um, in the regard of their, of their unbelief and, and, um, and where we all came from. Towards the end of the year, um, 
based on uh, Eric Mason's identity, I uh, really felt called to talk about gender. Um, Eric didn't specifically talk about that in his series. So we spent a couple of weeks talking about gender and what the world is showing and where the world is headed and, and their stance on all of that, because it's really important for the kids to have a clear view, especially um, with society's views and, and what that is on gender. So um, those are very good classes and the kids are dealing with this every day and it needs to be talked about by parents. We need a, we need a clear uh, understanding of God's creation and, and what, what gender is. God created them male and female and everything else I've kind of found comes from man. Um, so hopefully the class got some, a little bit of clarity out of, of the, the gender. Finally, and I know you were waiting for that word. <laughs> why follow Jesus? I mean, why? What's the big deal? So we talked about that for a class or two and looked at some scriptures. Looked at the scriptures where Jesus in the gospel calls us to follow him. Where he says the only way to get to the Father is through him. And after that, we spent the last two classes, um, kind of a personal testimony of my journey, in my childhood. And I, ex I explained to the kids that the importance of sticking with their faith and the importance of reading the Bible and studying it and really working hard to try to find that relationship with Jesus Christ, because my journey was the opposite. When I got older and headed into high school, I just walked away. So after the question was, why follow Jesus? The next question was, well, what happens if you don't? And I shared some of my stories of what can happen if you don't have that relationship with Jesus Christ and you head out into the world and you find your identity in all those things that the world says you're gonna find happiness in. It's not there, it's always with Christ. It's always was with Christ and um, my journey was the long way and I always encourage the kids don't walk away stick with it learn all you can you gotta you gotta have if you don't have Jesus Christ in your heart if you don't have that relationship then it's all for naught right you'll go and you'll end up going down paths where you shouldn't go down and doesn't mean God doesn't love you doesn't mean you can't receive forgiveness I need to shut up anyway that was a lot a lot to do so uh, thank you again, class. Thank you for everyone who helped me taught the class. Um, I, I loved your sermon, Pastor Tyler. If we don't put the work into teaching the kids about Christ every single day and combat all the teachings and everything that they're experiencing in the world, then are we doing our jobs as a church family, as a parent, as a grandparent? And it's a lot of work. And um, fight the good fight. It's worth it. Your kids are worth it. And you, you want them to have that Jesus in their heart. So graduates, uh, we wanna recognize the graduates um, who are moving on to the next phase of their life. We've got some eighth graders who are moving on to high school and we've got some high schoolers who are moving on to the next phase of their life, be it college or work. So uh, eighth grade graduates are uh, Anna Lynn Blow and Michael Johnson and Logan Grimm and Josh Young, uh, eighth graders. And high schoolers, congratulations. You've made it um, through some of the most volatile times in your life. You will look back and realize. Uh, Case Ballard, Keith Grimm and Sarah Grimm, uh, congratulations to you graduates. Um, this past week, as I, as I was kind of prepping to give the overview of the class and everything that we did, and I was thinking about the graduates, and I happened to receive an email that listed 23 scriptures to pass on to your graduates. Um, I said, hey, that's kind of interesting. So I read all 23, searching for something that might have some meaning for today. I'm not going to read all 23. Don't, don't worry. Um, but I ended up in Proverbs book of wisdom so especially for you high school graduates um 
Proverbs 3, I'm going to read verses 1 through 12, because I found that there was a tremendous amount of wisdom in there for, for graduates moving forth into the next phase of your life. Proverbs 3, 1 through 12, trust in the Lord with all your heart. My son, my daughter, do not forget my teaching, but let your heart keep my commandments. For length of days and years of life and peace they will add to you. Let not steadfast love and faithfulness forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. So you will find favor and good success in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. It will be healing to your flesh and refreshment to your bones. Honor the Lord with your wealth and with the first fruits of all your produce. Then your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will be bursting with wine. My son, my daughter, do not despise the Lord's discipline or be wary of his reproof, weary of his reproof. For the Lord reproves him whom he loves as a father, the son, daughter, in whom he delights. Thank you very much. You know, next week we're starting a sermon series on the book of Proverbs. So that was a good introduction. We want to say a big thank you to the teachers. You've already heard from them, but um, thank you, Amy Johnson and Sarah Blow and Shoshana Howard and Sarah Edgerly and Roy and Tina Rabadou for all that you poured into our kids this year. Would you stand up again? We can thank you. And Shoshana, if you would stay standing for a second, this was Shoshana's last year of teaching. She's going to move on to something new or maybe take a break, maybe come back at some point. But she has, as she said, taught for seven years. Um, so thank you, Shoshana, for that faithfulness to our kids. Praise God. Um, also, there were three people who helped sub, uh, Meg Smith, Katie Ballard, Heather Digby, and Amy DeBona, who helped in the, the um, younger class. So let's give them a thank, thank you hand clap. Um, Robin Smith, I know you didn't want any recognition. You put so much work in making this service happen and you were stepping down from the board, but you stayed on to do some important things. So thank you, Robin. And then one more person I want to recognize, we want to recognize is uh, Lorinda, Lorinda Michaud. Um, you probably wouldn't want this recognition, but, but too bad. <laughs> um, she, she picked a difficult time to be the chair of the Christian Ed Board, and yet she was um, steady at the helm. And I know she was frustrated. She couldn't, she wasn't here at church to see what was really happening, but yet you, you continued on with dedication and with patience and love. And so um, thank you, Lorinda, for all that you've done for Christian Ed for kids this year. We have, um, yep, Lorinda, this plant is for you. And all the other teachers and subs who are named, they have gifts up here. So you can get those after the service. Okay, we have a couple announcements, including, first of all, VBS. I'm going to let Meg do that. So my, I'm losing my voice, but I, I hope I can, you can understand me enough <laughs> to make this announcement. Um, VBS is coming August 1st through 5th, Sunday to Thursday, um, 5.30 to 7. And we hope if you're a kid, 
you're going to make sure you're here, talk to your parents, make them bring you. And if you're a parent and you want to, or a grown up and you want to help out, you can always use helpers. Um, or if you're an older kid, um, we can use your help as well. Uh, we aren't going to do dinner this year. So eat before you come, but there will be snacks and it's going to be great. It's going to be fun. It's here. We'll have a big tent. We're going to do a lot outside and we're going to learn about Jesus. So invite your friends, kids, let them know, bring them. Um, yeah. Thank you. Um, we do have the VBS CDs for any parents who don't have those yet and who want to start listening to the songs. A couple other quick announcements. Um, if you're watching on Facebook, could you please let us know you're here? And anyone else, too, if you're watching another week, let us know you're watching so we can, we're kind of discerning um, how to, to uh, move forward with the live stream now that things are pretty much back open. Um, last I checked, the vaccination uh percentage was 79.8 so we're inches away from having all restrictions lifted and stay tuned whether next week service will be inside or out here um and uh, baby bottles are due next week so you can still grab one if you want and fill it up with cash those are be those will be given to aspire together which is a pregnancy resource center Thank you for being with us today. And um, we're gonna close our service before the benediction by singing, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. We are all children, right? So let's um, stand as we sing this and then receive the benediction. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Jesus loves me, he who died, heaven's gates to open wide. He will wash away my sin, let his little child come in. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Amen. Receive the benediction. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. And I'm just going to pray for our barbecue real quick. Father, thank you for this beautiful day. Uh, thank you for calling us here. We pray that other folks would come and enjoy this time with us. May you, Jesus, be the host um, and us all the guests as we welcome people here. Thank you for all the hard work that has gone into this barbecue. Now may it be a time of joy and celebration and sharing your love together. And all God's people said, amen.